Welcome back to part 20 of Elden Ring the Ultimate Guide. Today it is the Redan Festival. Now if this is the first time you've watched any of these guides, then we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. Otherwise, we are heading to Ruins Rune Precipice, and we have already done Ruins Rune Precipice up to this point. And as we have now done Caelid, like I told you to do in the Ruins Rune Precipice episode, we are now have access to three summons for this boss that is entirely unnecessary. Now just as a side note, if you summon Great Horn Tragoth, he will give you a gesture. However, you can summon him in the Redan fight, which we will, and we get the gesture that way. So you can either summon him here or there, it doesn't really matter. But we are fighting Magma Worm, and uh, as with all the bosses, we're using Golden Vow, we're summoning the Imps, we're drinking our Physic Flask, and um, and then we're just using the the normal tactics for fighting the boss. Um, now we also put on Flame uh, Grant Me Strength, which is another thing that you can put on if you have the time, if you have the luxury. But otherwise, the, uh, I mean, we've already seen us fight this guy in the Ruined Shroom Pespice episode. Um, in the, what happens after you have done Caleb part of that episode. But yeah, you just get behind this thing, behind its back legs, and just start ground slamming the shit out of it. And that should be good enough. And then the, uh, the imps can fire in some extra hits. And, and that's the boss. The, these guys are ultimately pretty simple. Um... Another technique when we get Blood Blade, or Bloody, not Bloody, yeah, Blood Blade. Uh, you can spam Blood Blade at these guys really, really well. So if you have an upgraded an upgraded Reduvia, that is also another thing that you can do. Um, now when this guy staggers, hit the head, because uh, these guys have a, definitely a weaker head. And granted, you could get faster damage in this guy if you were just exclusively smacking its face, but then you're in front of it. And it does a gigantic amount of damage when it hits you, which is one thing you need to look out for with these guys. You do not want to get hit by its attacks, so don't get greedy. Just get your few hits in, and when you see it winding up for an attack, retreat. Or if you're like us, just fucking heal through the damage, because we're cool and based. But otherwise, now we need to activate the Redan Festival. Now we have done everything in the game up to this point. This is currently a choke point in terms of game progression. So... Now we're going to Altless Plateau, and as soon as we rest at this grace here, or indeed any grace in Altless Plateau, it will trigger the Redan Festival. So that's why we have to come here first, and that's why it's relevant to the Redan Festival. So we're going to level up a little bit, and I know that Josh is, like, chomping at the bit to say some stuff, so you can continue a little bit as well, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> no, as I said in the part where we definitely did Caelid first, um, you just got the Magma Worm Scale Sword. That is uh, a pretty decent weapon, scales of strength, faith, but before I talk about that anymore, riding up this hill you'll trigger a quote-unquote boss fight with the Ancient Dragon Lance Axe. Um, you don't have to fight it here because you can fight it later on. Fighting it here just makes it teleport away, as with the Dragon Adula by the three sisters near where Rani is, but we're riding a little bit further along just to pick up the next grace. There is a golden seed here, I'm not sure if we grab that, but it would make sense if we did. And I think what we're going to show you is the alternate location for Raya to appear. She yes. can appear at the top of the Grand Lift of Dectus, but if you came up this way, which we did and you should too because you get some good smithing stones from the ruins room precipice, Raya will be at this little ruin, Lux Ruins, by the grace. Now, we're talking to her. Um, you can refuse her invitation to the manor here, but she won't move unless you find the manor on your own. Um, I would advise taking the manor, though. I think we're actually going to show you the other location she can be in as well, so we yes. now have both halves of the Dectus Medallion because we've been to Grail's Dragon Barrow in Fort Farrath, and we've been to Limgrave in Fort Height. So we have both halves. We can come here, hoist the medallion, and she's just there on the left-hand side or would be just there on the left-hand side if we hadn't done it the uh, the other way. Yeah. Now, the thing to mention is that going up the deck this way to get to Altus is kind of pointless because, again, it's so worth going through the Ruined Shroom Precipice because it's pretty short and pretty easy and there's tons of upgrade materials. And it's also... You're going much further out your way to take the lift than to just go up the precipice. So most of the time you're going to be meeting Raya at Lux Ruins. However, now we have activated the Redan Festival by doing the Rune Tree Precipice 
ordered, lifted Ectus and rested at a grace in Altus Plateau, we can come back here in Caled and use this teleporting, uh, the sending gate rather, and this will take us to Redmain Castle. Now we've already been here, and as you can see, things are different now. There's no enemies in this area, and um, a bunch of these NPCs have gathered to fight Redan. Uh, so there's a couple of NPCs you want to like speak to and do some stuff here. Now we're just uh, fixing our build for the upcoming boss fight. Now for Redan, my, speci my specific technique, if you're fighting them one-on-one, -on -one, is to use double slash of using the katana. And you will see why in a second once we get to fighting them. But if you speak to that NPC there, we'll get polite bow gesture. Now there's Blade, we can speak to him. Um, I don't think you have to speak to any of the NPCs in this area to progress a quest. But just in case, you might as well. And we're also going to allocate some more healing flasks uh, over the blue flasks. Um, and this is specifically, we're going to show you two versions of Redan. One, if you, for whatever fucking reason, decide to fight him solo. And then two, the much, 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 much fucking easier way if you just summon all the NPCs in the fight and let them fight him for you. But, now we're going to speak to Jaren and we're going to start the festival. Then we get the uh, heartening cry. And now we can just take the lift at the back of this area and head down to Redan. I think there's a couple of smithing stones to pick up before that, but otherwise that's kind of it. Yeah, so the NPC we specifically spoke to was uh, Fingermaiden Theralina, and as you said, she gives you the polite bow gesture. You can get her as a spirit ash, actually, by progressing Celibus's quest mm, at any point. Cool. Um, Trigoth will also give you a gesture when summoned. Um, I think it's the casual greeting gesture he gives uh, you yes which we will show you in the uh summoning all the npcs version now to make a point fighting redan we're going to be using blood flame blade blood flame blade coupled with double slash and the katana can pump out an inordinate amount of bleed now very quickly you're going to jump on the horse and then you're going to ride back the way immediately uh to the point where redan will blink out of existence briefly and what this does is, initially, when you start this fight, Redan will be firing arrows at you constantly, and they're quite difficult to dodge. If you immediately head back and blink him out of existence, when you move forward again and he reappears, he will immediately he'll fire an arrow off to the side and then immediately start his, like, combat phase for whatever reason. So, we've put on Blood Flame Blade, we've got Blood Double Slash on our katana, and this is such a fantastic way of building up Bleed. Uh, this is going to be taking absolute chunks off Redan. Of all the techniques that I used, this was genuinely the best thing. Particularly because it incorporates into the build that we've created so well to begin with. Um, as you can see, you can just spam the shit out of that and just take a huge amount of his HP off. Now, when he gets to below half health, he will jump up into there and turn it into a big fucking meteor. So, there is a way of knowing exactly the direction he's going to come from. But make sure you're looking at the sky and uh, getting the fuck out of his way when he crash lands. Oh, you can tell the direction he's going to be coming from. It's which direction you are facing after your lock-on breaks. So right. if you're locked onto him and he jumps in the air, um, when your lock-on breaks, whatever direction you're facing is the direction he will fly in from. So the way to avoid that pretty consistently is to mount torrent and then as he's about to crash into the ground, you ride to the side instead of trying to ride away from it because it it follows you as it drags along the ground. Um, as you can see, his second phase here has a more expanded moveset. He has these big meteors. For this, don't get hit by that. Dodge to the left, then the right, and it will miss you every time. Um, when he does these big AoEs, it's actually not a bad idea to get hit by them because it puts you right in front of him. And then that large explosion he follows up with only has a hitbox in front of him. So you can actually get behind him and take advantage of that. Now, this move, easy enough to dodge, as you saw there. Um, it's when he's finally about to approach you in that animation that you want to dodge to the um, right in both instances. It will miss you every time. I'm somewhat of an expert on fighting Radan Solo because he's my favorite boss in the entire game. Um, so I actually go out of my way to fight him solo. Um, finishing him off with the bow there, um, once again showing the usefulness of having ranged damage, be it spell, be it bow, be it consumables, any form. But here's the footage for the second fight where I think we're going to be summoning all the NPCs. Yes, now um, 
specifically for this footage, I didn't know about the um, running backwards to despawn him and then forwards to respawn him method that we showed you at the first phase. But this method is so much easier than fighting him solo. Now, there's another thing that you can add when you fight him solo. If you're able to get him with a rot breath, uh, that will... Um, he is... Well, so he can be rotted, but actually, it, in my experience, it did take quite a lot to get him rotted. So that is just something to bear in mind. You could indeed put a rot grease on your weapon and then use double slash. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, he in his second phase, he does an insane amount of damage. And uh, is quite difficult to hit because he's quite relentless. There's very, very few openings to the point where I was kind of just trading damage with him. But, in this version of the fight, you basically don't even need to fight him. All these little lights that are coming out of the ground, you can just launch on Torrent and then just summon all these NPCs. And there's so many of them to summon. And, um, yeah, so what we're now going to be doing is using Rot Breath to get him rotted. Now, that actually did get him rotted pretty quickly, but when you're fighting him one-on-one, -on -one, I found it was much harder to actually get a Rot Breath off because of how aggressive he is. But once he's rotted, he has he basically will just continue to be rotted for most of the fight. He I did test this. It does wear off eventually, but he seems to be rotted for longer than other enemies. Um, if any of the NPCs die, you can resummon them. And uh, obviously watch out for him jumping into the sky and uh, doing his thing when, when he reaches half health. Bear that in mind but um as you can see he is still rotted and we've barely fought him we're literally just going to these pillars of light and just pressing triangle you don't even need to wait for a prompt to come up you just hammer triangle and it will just they'll summon them um so it's, it's, other it's things to strange. note about the radan fight is poison seems to last a long time on him as does rot and poison and rot both stack so if you were to rot him you can also poison him if you use something like Poison Mist, and the easiest way to get that off is to have the other NPCs be distracting him. And speaking of the NPCs, you can summon Okina, um, who uses blood and fire damage. You can summon Theralina, who will heal you. You can summon Jaren, who uses some spells and a Flamber, so he can inflict bleed. Blide the Half-Wolf, who can inflict Frostbite on him. Alexander the Warrior Jar. You can summon Patches, but it's pointless because he sees what you're fighting and then goes, nah, and just leaves. Um, you can, can summon, summon Lionel, Trigoth and you can summon Lionel. Um, and I think the most you can have at any given time is five. And if any one of them dies, you can go to the, the big glowing banners that you can see. He's jumping behind one now. That's where the summon signs will appear. So if you find yourself without a summon for this fight, come to any one of these banners and the sign should appear at random at any of them. Okay, so for beating Redan, you get both his Remembrance and his Great Rune. Now when it comes to his Great Rune, you could go to Dragon Barrow, you could go all the way up the Tower of Caelid, and you could activate his Great Rune. We just couldn't be arsed making two trips, so we'll do it when we get there. Now when it comes to his Great Rune, that buffs your health, stamina, and uh, sorry, it buffs your health, stamina, and FP by 15%. Essentially, all you need to know is early game Godric's rune is generally better, and by late game, Redan's rune is generally better. Now, when it comes to his remembrances, I can't quite remember what it is. What is it again? So, for the remembrance of the Star Scourge, you can get one of two rewards. You can get the Lion Great Bow or the Star Scourge Great Sword. Now, the Star Scourge Great Sword is kind of unique in that it is a paired weapon. Equipping one of it gives you two, and when you two-hand it, you dual wield. Um, it has a unique Ash of War called Star Call the Cry, which has a big area of effect pull, which if you're surrounded by enemies, it will pull them all towards you in the radius of the follow-up R2, which is this big explosion. Very cool, very flashy, tons of fun to use if you're interested. And the Lion Great Bow has Radon's Rain as its unique effect, which... When you pair it with Radan's spears, so the arrows that we were picking up in his arena, it gets an increased gravity magic effect, and it does massive damage to enemies that have big hitboxes. It rains down arrows on them. It's generally fantastic. And now you know. Uh, yeah, and I mean, as you can see, they can pretty much take him down single-handedly. 
but the rot damage was the the MVP for that fight. And I think that's pretty much it for Redan, honestly. There's a few there's a few items in his boss, uh, boss arena. Uh, so we're gonna pick them up. Um yeah, you once he's dead, you'll get a cutscene. And um then it'll be a red mark on the map, and that's where the next area we're gonna go to. So there's Redan Spear, uh, which is like four great arrows. And then some more Redan Spears, so we get ten. Maybe there's some more. I know there's, I know there's another item in here somewhere. I think. Maybe there's only two, actually. So, now there is actually something we need to do to progress an NPC quest, and this stuff is imperative. We need to speak to both Blythe and Alexander here to progress their quest. Um, this is one of the few you have to speak to the moments. But now you know. So, exhaust both their dialogues. To be clear, they will appear here. Um, once you have um, progressed their quests enough to trigger the festival now they will actually appear if you don't progress their quests at all so if you've never spoken to Blythe or alexander both of them will appear at the radan festival the only reason they wouldn't is if you'd killed one of them which you shouldn't be doing also just to doubly 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 remember at the very least if you haven't before summon great horn tragoth to get the gesture um so i don't think we need to, i don't think we need to say that anymore but heading all the way north in this gigantic boss arena, uh, there is the War Dead Catacombs. Now, something to bear in mind that this place is actually scaled higher than Caled and Altus Plateau. I think it's scaled for Dragon Barrow. Um, but it is doable. It's one of the hardest and one of the most pain in the ass dungeons in the game. And we're going to show you how to do it at this level. Again, the, the official take is just wait and until, until Dragon Barrow then do it. But you know what? We are impatient. It just saves running back across Radan's arena again. You know, exactly. we're just getting it here now, clearing it up. Now we never need to come back to Radan's arena. Um, there are a few enemies you're going to encounter in here. There are spectral versions of Clean Rock Knights, Radan Soldiers, and Red Main Knights, as well as I think Radan Foot Soldiers appear in this cave. Um... Each of them can drop their respective drops, which Tony will go over in a moment, but the ghost versions will continually respawn. So it doesn't matter if they die, it doesn't matter if you take the time to kill them, these Dragon Barrow scaled enemies, you could sit here wailing on them for ages, and they will continually respawn. So first you'd be coming up this left path to grab that singular glove wart, grabbing the item in the middle of the path, and then another glove wall, and then I think we wrap around and do the upper portion of this dungeon first. Yes. Um, avoid these great arrows being shot at you along the way, because they will hurt very yeah, badly. There's, there's a lot of dodging to be involved here, and it's not even worth fighting these things. It's literally just heal through the pain, and just, yeah. Um, you can see they do a ton of damage. Like, this is more damage than most bosses are doing at this stage of the game. Uh, this guy being particularly ballsy, Fuck off, for the love of God. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, this cave is... It, it's kind of nightmare fuel. If you really don't like getting ganged up on, this this place is horrible to deal yeah. with. Um, and like again, I said, it's look literally... Look how much damage that did. And it's just not worth fighting them. Like, literally, if like make sure you've used most of your runes before coming here and just suicide run every attempt. Uh, even if, by the way, you're at, like, Dragon Barrel, like, level, um, it's still not worth fighting anything in here because they just respawn. Um, and then once you've grabbed that item, which I can't remember where it was, you're going to jump through this little gap in the wall, and finally you'll get a little bit of respite. So that's something. Well, a but... little bit, because there's imps in here, and these imps are Dragon Barrow scaled. Look how little damage you're doing to them. That was a fully charged R2 and a repost, and it still isn't dead. This is true, but... It is still weak to the same techniques that imps are weak to, which is the guard counters, or indeed doing a fully charged attack and then getting a counter on them. Now, the Clean Rot Knights can drop um, the, their sword, if, so the weapon they're wiel wielding, so that's the sword, the Clean, clean Rot Spear. Uh, so there's the Redan Soldier's Ashes, by the way. Um, again, we're not going to fight this guy, and we're going to jump through this little hole in the wall here. Actually, before I get to drops, this guy here, um, right, when you pull this lever, right, Make sure to put this message away 
Because you can't do anything until you press triangle to make that message go away. And with that guy being there, you might act like, this killed me like twice doing that, right? So just be clear. Make sure that message is off your screen fucking pronto. Alright? <laughs> so there is just some imps down here that we're going to take care of. Fight them one by one. Use the guard counters, right? And in the meantime, the clean rot knights can drop the sword, the spear, or the scythe. Then the clean rot set, being the helm, the armor, gauntlets, greaves. They can also drop Trina's lilies or Michaela's lilies. Uh, the Redan soldiers can drop essentially the respective stuff. So whatever weapon they're wielding and the armor. So that could be, you know, that's the armor is the helm, the surcoat, the gauntlets, the greaves. They can drop the Lord Sworn straight sword, the war pick, the heavy crossbow, the Lord Sworn shield, the brass shield, various bolts, smith and stones, smoldering butterflies and mushrooms. The red main knights, similar again. They can drop their armor set. So that's the helm, armor, gauntlets, greaves. The great sword, the partisan if they're wielding it. The great bow if they're wielding it. The red main great shield if they've got it. And then the imps can drop all the imp shit, so that is the, um, the, this is the forked imp sword or whatever the fuck, and then there's the forked hatchet that they can drop, and then the different head pieces that they're wet, that they have. Aye, okay, well, there's the drops done, thank fucking god. Right, take a little break. Um, <laughs> so, the soldier's ashes that we just got are like all the other soldier's ashes, it summons a small group of them, I think in terms of the Rodan soldiers, it summons two of them. They are actually quite aggressive. They deal fire damage. They have a range of different attacks. Um, they're not a bad summon to use at all. They're not the imps, but they're not bad. So if you were looking for something a little different just to switch things up, they're a pretty good option. There's a Dark Souls 3 style chest with collapsing stars. Now, that has a similar effect to the other gravity spells in that it will ground airborne enemies. So bats, birds, etc. Um, doesn't work on dragons. Um, despite them also being airborne. Does not work. Um, we're heading back to the Grace now just to get our flasks and such before we go take on the boss, which is kind of a tough one um, for this cave. But, as I was saying, Collapsing Stars, it does magic damage, it's got relatively low requirements, it's relatively fast to cast, it's all round not a bad spell, and it's good for comboing into other spells as well. So, now... We are about to fight another, another ulcerated tree spirit. Now, granted, this thing is, again, scaled way higher than we are. So this one is actually tough. Um, so we're going to try using Double Slash plus Blood Flame Blade, which, in my testing, was the best thing that I could, that I could come up with. We're also going to be summoning Luteal for this boss fight because the imps just get absolutely decimated by this thing. Um, they're hardy, but they're not Dragon Barrow... Ulcerated Tree Spirit Hardy. So we're going to immediately summon Luteo. And um, we don't really have a lot of time to put on our buffs. So you need to make sure you've got your um, your uh, Golden Vow and Physic Flask on immediately. And then we need to try and find an opening to be able to get Blood Flame Blade on our weapon. So apparently I'm using Ground Slam. I do not know why. I guess you're trying to break its poise just to demo that that is something you can do, but Double Slash would probably be better because you could apply Blood Flame Blade to the weapon that you would Double Slash with. There's a poise break. You can repost it in the eye, or you can just repeatedly attack the face, hoping to build up Bleed and Frostbite. Um, but no, Double Slash with the Blood Flame Blade on it, you've added a lot of fire damage, which Ulcerated Tree Spirits are very weak to. And you've also added additional bleed buildup over time on hit, which is a nice thing to have. Now, this tree spirit in particular, while it may look the same as the one we've already fought, the one in um, Limgrave, as you can see there, the plumes of fire that come out are pink hued. And that's because this one can inflict scarlet rot. Now, it has a grab attack, signified by dashing away, screaming, and then lunging towards you. If it does that and grabs you, at this stage, with the level that we are, that will probably just kill you. Um, this explosion does quite a chunk of damage, builds up quite a lot of Scarlet Rot, so if you can, try your best to avoid it. It's not easy to do because you've not got a lot of room to work with, but hopefully you're a little better than we were here. Um, I've, um, I've worked out why I was using Ground Slam to begin with as well. Uh, because if I started out using Bleed, 
I would then have to keep using bleed in the powered up state when I could use ground slam to take care of easy damage and then when it's in its powered up state I can then start bleeding it because that's like a bigger chunk of damage that I get to deal with. At least I'm assuming that is what my logic was. Um, again, you will probably die to this guy because he is much... I mean, you can see the amount of health and damage he's doing compared to bosses normally. Now, that scream jump away thing, that was the grab. Do not get hit by that. Um, it's pretty much the only thing that is like immediately... Well, there's two things that are predictable with this guy. Uh, it's when he stops moving, he's going to do that explosion. And uh, when he does that jump away thing, he's going to do the grab. And the, the grab is easy enough to dodge. You just need to be aware of the... There, that. As soon as he does that big big swish that doesn't make any logical sense for him to be able to move that fast, that's when you know you need to get out of the way. As soon as the boss starts making absolutely zero sense, that's when you're like, oh, grab. <laughs> yeah, because this is making complete sense up to this point, but that complete... No. That move simply does not compute. Like, you yeah, shouldn't be able to not. do that. We've just... We've gone down the rabbit hole. We've... We've taken the fucking red pill. We're seeing the world how it is. <laughs> and it should not be able to do what it just did. But that last see. grab was actually a great example of of the grab itself. Now, we do get a red main, red main knight ogre summon. It's okay. We do get a golden seed. That's cool. Um, how relevant that golden seed is at this point in the game is arguable. So again, don't worry too much if you're struggling. But we now were able to level up where we have 40 endurance. So we've now reached our endurance target, and now we're just a few levels off from reaching our vigor target. Obviously, we're just going to be pumping stats into vigor anyway, but currently it was to get 40 endurance and 45 vigor. But now we can start Fia's quest. Now is the time to do it. So, Fia, the deathbed companion, she has an ending tied to her. She offers to hold you, as you see in the animation for here. It's very lengthy. You will get tired of seeing this animation. When you are held, she'll give you a little dialogue line, and you'll be rewarded with the Baldekin's Blessing. That is a consumable that you can get an infinite number of by being held an infinite number of times. Uh, popping it will give you a temporary buff to your poise, so you're harder to knock over. Um... And if you want another one, you just come back and get held again. By being hogged by fear, you've triggered her quest. It will now begin. Um, we're getting held again because we should have a dialogue option to talk about some of the other NPCs we've encountered as part of yes. her quest. That would be Roger and also D, Hunter of the Dead. Um, yeah, you get the talk in secret dialogue option. And she yeah, will once, ask yeah. you... Yeah, she will ask you to return a dagger to its rightful owner. That would be D. We go take it to D. We uh, rest at the grace, and that will progress her quest to the next stage, where I think she will just continue on to the point where later she kind of becomes a boss. Kind of, After yes. Right in and, and the way that um, what's her face in Demon Souls was a boss. Yeah, the same sort of sense as uh, Maiden Australia. Um, the boss is Gal Vinland. He's the boss. Yeah. But so um, we're gonna we're gonna immediately use the blessing because having the blessing in your inventory reduces your maximum HP by five percent. I mean, it's not that much. Um, you did get a lot of people very early on in Elden Ring's life saying, you know, what's this symbol under my health, under my stamina bar? Sorry, and it was like a red box with a down arrow on it. And it's because yeah. they had the Baldekin's Blessing, hadn't read its effect, and didn't know it reduced your HP. But, as I said, you speak to D, give him the dagger, rest of the grace, and now this one of the last doors in the round table will be open. This one here. D is dead. We pick up his shit. We talk to Fear. She disappears because I guess we were just having a fever dream of a woman yeah. who wanted to hog us. Um... <laughs> And we've gone back on our meds, so she doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's it for Fear's Quest for the longest time. We do get this very swish armor set that we'll swiftly be getting fucking rid of, which is really sad. Yes, it is sad. And, but for just now, it is technically better than the Carrion Knight set. But we are now going to be warping over to Fort Hate. Sight of Grace, because uh, in the next episode, we're going to be doing Nocron, which is a giant hole in the ground that has now appeared because a meteor hit it directly in front of us where we are just now. 
And that is it for the Redan's Festival. And okay, there we go. That's Redan Festival. Done. Join us in part 21, where we're going to be doing Nocron and Siofra Aqueduct. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.